taught man that he is a hopeless misfit, made of two elements, both symbols of death. A body without a soul is a corpse. A soul without a body is a ghost. Yet such is their image of man's nature, the battleground of a struggle between a corpse and a ghost. A corpse endowed with some evil volition of its own, and a ghost endowed with the knowledge that everything known to man is non-existent, that only the unknowable exists. Do you observe what human faculty that doctrine was designed to ignore? It was man's mind that had to be negated in order to make him fall apart. Once he surrendered reason, he was left at the mercy of two monsters whom he could not fathom or control. Walthers v. Abbott Due April 21st by 11.59 p.m. points 200 submitting a file upload available April 11th at 12 a.m., April 21st at 11.59 p.m. 11 days. This assignment was locked April 21st at 11.59 p.m. In this assignment our office has been hired to pursue a case for our client Mr. Walthers. He was injured in a rear-end collision on May 12, 2015. Ignore our statute of limitations problem, the negotiations with the defense have broken down, so we need to file a complaint. Please draft a complaint for negligence. Here's the accident report. Note that the diagram appears to be inaccurate. To check on what the little numbers in the margins of the police report are, you'll need to do a little online detective work and find the WSB collision report overlay. Links to an external site. If you need one, create a new pleading with Microsoft Office or you can use this pleading paper template to draft your complaint. Be sure to double space your complaint, all court documents should always be double spaced and on numbered pleading paper like the template. The entire document should be in Times New Roman 12. Some of the complaints we've looked at in class may be helpful to you. Reviewing your class notes and the model samplaints we looked at in the week 3 summary, available at the end of this week, you will remember some of the things from these complaints that we liked and what we didn't. Use what we liked, lose what we didn't. On the template there are places where some of our case information belongs. Make sure we're in the right county and court. Put in our information and remove any irrelevant material. Remember to include all the necessary parts of a complaint, jurisdiction, elements, the damages we're trying for. They may include lost wages, medical bills, future earnings, pain and suffering, etc. Put in all the damages we can reasonably request. Do not add facts that we don't have. Use your own name as the attorney, and the case number will be 22-29496-5. The grading will depend in large part on precisely you follow instructions and on how professional the document looks. That means that formatting, spelling and grammar errors will cost you points. Think about what you borrow from model complaints before you borrow it. The supervising attorney needs this to be done right the first time because supervising attorneys hate paying you for making mistakes that they have to pay you to fix, and there is usually no time to fix them. Questions? Email me or bring your questions to class next week. George R. Armour Assignment in the District of the State of Washington in and for the County of Thurston Nicholas C. Walther's Plaintiff, versus Mark A. Abbott and J. Doe Abbott, individually and as marital community defendants. Case number 22-29496-5 Complaint for Damages. I. Parties 1.1 Plaintiff Nicholas C. Walther's is currently a resident of Bonnie Lake, Pierce County, Washington at all times relevant and material to this complaint. Pleading title, 21.2 Defendants, Mark A. Abbott and J. Doe Abbott on information and belief are residents of Rainier, Thurston County, Washington at all times relevant and material to this complaint. 1.3 Passenger, Chelsea R. Lemberg is currently a resident of Puyallup, Pierce County, Washington at all times relevant and material to this complaint. 2. Jurisdiction and Venue 2.1 This court has jurisdiction over the subject matter and the parties involved, and is the proper venue for this proceeding pursuant to RCW 4.12.025. 3. 
Statement of Facts 3.1 on the date of May 12, 2015, at 1708, Nicholas C. Walthers, and passenger Chelsea R. Limburg were driving on NB Interstate 5. 3.2 Defendant, Abbott, who was tailgating behind Plaintiff Walthers, failed to stop in time when Plaintiff Walthers slowed his vehicle in concordance with traffic ahead. 3.3 Defendant Abbott, crashed into the back of the Plaintiff Walthers vehicle, damaging the rear end of the Plaintiff's vehicle, and injuring both the Plaintiff Walter, and his pleading title, 3 Passenger Chelsea R. Lemberg, who both cited neck pain caused by the accident. 4. Negligence 4.1 Duty, the defendant, through common law, statutes, regulation, and or ordinance owed the plaintiff a duty to drive attentively, keeping careful lookout, and otherwise exercise ordinary and reasonable care while operating a vehicle within the state of Washington. This duty included a duty to obey all relevant rules of the road pursuant to RCW 46.61.145-4.2 breach, the defendant breached their duties as set forth in 4.3 Proximate Cause, as a direct and proximate cause of the defendant's negligent actions, which breached the duty observed in RCW 46.61.145, the plaintiff Walthers, and his passenger, Lemberg has suffered from neck pain, emotional distress, other pending medical expenditures, and damages to the vehicle. V. Prayer of Relief 5.1 Special damages for plaintiff in such amounts as are proven at trial. Pleading Title 45.2 General damages for plaintiff in such amounts as are proven at trial. 5.3 Costs including reasonable attorney's fees for plaintiff as are proven at trial. 5.4 For such other and further relief as the court deems just, equitable and proper for plaintiff at time of trial. Dated this 21. Day of April 2022. George R. Hoyta, attorney for plaintiff. Great, Mr. Paul Landry. The formatting is off, George. It looks odd. 1.3, we don't represent the passenger. Fix those things and this one will work. Your teachers, the mystics of both schools, have reversed causality in their consciousness, then strive to reverse it in existence. They take their emotions as a cause and their mind as a passive effect. They make their emotions their tool for perceiving reality. They hold their desires as an irreducible primary, as a fact superseding all facts. An honest man does not desire until he has identified the object of his desire. He says, it is, therefore I want it. They say, I want it, therefore it is. They want to cheat the axiom of existence and consciousness. They want their consciousness to be an instrument not of perceiving but of creating existence, an existence to be not the object but the subject of their consciousness. They want to be that God they created in their image and likeness, who creates a universe out of a void by means of an arbitrary whim. George R. Hoyts resume. Serve a notice at gmail.com. Paralegal student slash barber slash bartender slash professional performer. Accomplishments. Co-author and published book, The You'll Be a Woman, by Anastasia Armour, available at Amazon. Com. 2018 spokesman for the Empowerment Zone Team in 1993. Traveled to Washington, D.C. with Tacoma. Mayor, Harold Moss, Freight House Square owner, Keith Stone, and others. Met with the Secretary of HUD. Henry Cisneros and other delegates contributed to earning $2 million for the city of Tacoma. Articles and pictures are published in the News Tribune and Facebook. Performed at the Tacoma Dome twice for the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. birthday celebration in 2009 and 2010 with Drive John Falskow, Dean of Tacoma Community College slash conductor of Seattle Symphony. Together, we formed the group Survey Notice and Theory. We have recorded and released multiple albums and have done college tours around Tacoma and Seattle, WA. Another member of our group is Sam Tavizel, Mace Hoven, is a current clarinet player for the Philadelphia Orchestra. Member of Strive, since 1991. A youth local access television group that produced the show, What's...
Later, I reproduced the show at TCC from 2001 to 2003 called What's Up? College Edition. I was the producer of the show and the president of the club. Starred in multiple PSAs for television. EFN, Food for Thought, 1990 Pecan Stuck, 1992. MTV Rock the Vote, About Us, 1994, Evergreen Law Group, Identification, Search, Shut Up. 2011-1992 Youth Hall of Fame Creative Genius Award for creating poetic slash rap form of the classic story of Hamlet, the work was published in Ocean Edge Magazine in 1993. My name was engraved on two stones in the Tacoma Mall for 10 years honoring the Youth Hall of Fame. Guest on Tacoma Radio Y.104.9 for the song Blood Oath, a tribute to Urban League Academy. Teacher Michelle Bucri, published poet from Tacoma Northwest Dispatch newspaper 1998 to 2002. Multiple works published in El Calcio magazine, a Latino newspaper in Tacoma. West. 1999 spokesman for Evergreen State College Tacoma Law Club, worked on Explainment Clinic. Participated in the San Francisco Clio LSAT workshop. Guest on the Podcast Institute for Black Justice, hosted by Carol Mitchell. Promoted the book, The Your Woman 2021 Hip Hop Historian and Creator of the Survive Notice Hip Hop Museum on Facebook. Highlights Northwest Hip Hop and a Broad History and Cultural Narrative. Features live interviews, information, and links. Also features the blog, The Artifacts Newsletter, written and published by myself. Professional experience. Public speaking and leadership. I am a professional performer that has been in the spotlight since I was 12 years old. I have perfected my craft through years of educational training, practice, and life experience. For this reason, I am usually the face man when it comes to promoting a group effectively. I am a published author, and I have acquired multiple skills throughout my years of educational training. I am highly creative and can usually come up with groundbreaking ideas when brainstorming alone or in a group. Youth Hall of Fame Creative Genius Award. Empowerment Zone Spokesman for the Youth and Young Adults of Tacoma. Spokesman for the Law Club at Evergreen State College, Tacoma. Employment History Northwest Dispatch, Tacoma, Washington, 1992 to 2001. Reporter slash poet journalist Tower Records, Tacoma, Washington, 1992 to 1994. Buyer, cashier, customer service, custodian Texaco Gas Station, Tacoma, Washington, 1995. Cashier slash product stalker slash customer service professional services unlimited. Fort Lewis, Washington, 1996 Dishwasher slash Busser Do Well Services and Supplies, City, State, 1997 Commissary Warehouse Worker slash Custodian Strive, Tacoma, Washington, 1991 to 2003 Reporter slash Director slash Camera Tech slash Video Editor slash Spokesman Evergreen Love Group, Olympia, Washington, 2012 to 2012 Paralegal in Training DSHS, Anastasia Armour, Carroll, Washington, 2017 to 2021 Home Care Assistant Education State in High School, Tacoma, Washington, 1992 HS Diploma, General Urban League Academy, Tacoma, Washington, 1998 Certificate, Business Communication slash Typing, Tacoma Community College, Tacoma, Washington, 2008 Associate of Arts, Business Administration, Bates Technical College, Tacoma, Washington, 2008 LL, B, Barber slash Stylist Bartending Academy, Tacoma, Washington, 2008 LL, B, Mixologist Evergreen State College, Tacoma, Tacoma, Washington, 2012 Bachelor of Arts, Liberal Arts Communication Skills Reading, Writing, Leadership, Public Speaking, Typing, Acting, Performing Arts, H. Paralegal Experience, Business Communication, Negotiation, H. Video Operator, Editor, Creative Ingenuity, Customer Service, Publications, The Obia Woman by Anastasia Armour, The Obia Woman, Come August 2017, Novel, The Art of Facts Newsletter, The Art of Facts Newsletter, Walk, Tom April 2022 to the Survey Notice Hip Hop Museum. Survey Notice Hip Hop Museum. Facebook. Tom March 2022 Northwest Dispatch. Multiple poems for newspaper by George Boyce. Virginia Taylor. Pat Richardson. January 2002 The Evergreen Law Club. Tacoma Facts Newspaper. Tacoma WA. January 2011 Affiliation Spokesman Slash Reporter Slash Director Slash Camera and Video Tech. Struck. Tacoma. WA, 1991 to 2003, a spokesman for youth and young adults at Tacoma. WA, Tacoma Empowerment Zone Team, Tacoma. WA, 
1993 to 1994 camera tech slash actor swab tv tacoma wa 1999 to 2003 paralegal in training evergreen law group olympia wa 2011 as student body senator tacoma community college tacoma wa 2008 to 2022 licensing installation bartending academy tacoma wa 2008 traffic control flagger tacoma community college tacoma wa 2008 barber stylist Bates Technical College, Tacoma, WA, 2007 to 2008 Training LSAT Special, Clio Law Conference, San Francisco, TA, 2011 Honors Hamlet, Rap, George R. Hoyer, New Hall of Fame Creative Genius Award, Tacoma, WA, 1992 ASB Scholarship Award, Bates Technical College, Tacoma, WA, 2008 Talent What's Up, Slash What's Up. College Edition, Producer Slash Performer Slash Director Slash Actor, Thrive, Honor Roll, Remember George Rante Drama, Black Sheep of Tacoma, Old Movie, Producer, Performer, Actor, Director, Editor, Students Television. Harold G. Moss, Council Member, District No. 4, December 16, 1998. To whom it may concern, I am writing this letter on behalf of Mr. George Hoyt, a young man that I have come to know and admire over the past four to five years. I met Mr. Hoyt during the time I served on the Tacoma City Council and as mayor of the city. Mr. Hoyt was chosen to represent the city's youth in Tacoma's Empowerment Zone application in 1994. During this time, Mr. Hoyt along with city staff, community representatives, Congressman Norm Dix and I traveled to Washington, D.C. to make the formal presentation of our application directly to Henry Cisneros, Secretary, Department of Housing and Urban Development. It was during that time, I noticed George's rare gift for negotiation. He spoke with the Secretary confidently, listened and demonstrated a patience far beyond his years. The secretary confidently listened and remarked about his presentation and depth of knowledge of what young people could expect from being included in the application. George continues to be active in the community. His participation has centered on his interest and skills in media projects. He's an excellent interviewer who possesses a real sense of depth and asks insightful questions. He is also involved with Strive, a youth-sponsored television program that focuses on involving young people in the direct hands-on experience of video production. I am particularly pleased with his production called Jones in the Speed Zone. The show, which was created as a result of a vision George had, is aimed at educating young people on how to deal with the issues they face. The show hopes to impact young people by showcasing their peers handling negative situations in positive ways. It is using the old adage if you give a man a fish he can eat for a day, but if you teach a man to fish he can eat for a lifetime. I take great pride in recommending him to you as a dedicated young man whom I have a lot of faith in and who has a bright future ahead of him. Should you have additional questions or would like further information, please feel free to contact me at 253-798-7590. Sincerely, Harold G. Moss, Council Member, District 4. Of a classical education. The Evergreen State College, Tacoma Campus, March 12, 2022. To whom it may concern. From Peter Bacho, JD, LLM. Regarding George Hoyt, TCC student. George Hoyt, my former student at the Evergreen State College Tacoma campus, has asked me for a letter of support for financial assistance in order to continue in his academic program. I do so gladly. I have had him in an array of classes during his time at the Tacoma campus. I was also his advisor and know his work well. As a student, George was outstanding, gifted and focused. His questions and comments on issues ranging from law, politics, history, literature and public policy demonstrated careful preparation for each class discussion. He is a mature, dedicated, and highly focused adult learner. He was a meticulous researcher and a strong writer. He demonstrated sophisticated critical thinking skills. He is capable of analyzing government policies and assessing their impact, especially on our most vulnerable populations. In other areas, he always listened carefully and collaborated very effectively with others, a key in the academic, political, and professional realms. 
During group project work, he was patient with his fellow students and thoughtful. Other students valued his contributions and enjoyed working with him. In short, he is an empathetic person, concerned about the direction of our nation and the obvious burdens faced by other Americans, especially people in the margins. He is determined to make a difference. He was thriving at the Tacoma campus, working effectively in diverse groups and producing excellent outcomes. I fully support George's goal of procuring enough assistance to complete his academic goals at TCC. He is a talented student with great potential. Please feel free to contact me batchup at evergreen. edu if you have further questions. CR Taylor Law, PES. 203 4th Avenue East Suite 407. Olympia, Washington 98501. March 9, 2022. To whom it may concern. I am writing concerning George Hoyt. I am an attorney, in practice continuously since 2006. Between 2007 and 2011, I was worked with a firm called the Evergreen Law Group, PES, located in Olympia, Washington. I was one of the managing partners of the firm, beginning in 2009. During that time, I represented individuals accused of crimes and represented people who had been the victims of police misconduct in civil, federal litigation. In 2010, the Evergreen Law Group employed George Hoyt as an intern. As one of the managing partners, I had the opportunity to both supervise and work closely with Mr. Hoyt. As I recall, Mr. Hoyt's job duties included both duties along the lines of a legal assistant answering the telephone, greeting clients, filing legal documents, assisting with organizing the calendar, but also assisting with developing a marketing strategy. In particular, I recall Mr. Hoyt assisting in writing a script for a video advertisement, and actually appeared as an actor in that video. My recollection is that Mr. Hoyt was eager to learn about the interworkings of a criminal defense slash police misconduct legal practice, and more than capable of providing a positive contribution. Mr. Hoyt reached out to me recently and indicated he is currently enrolled in a paralegal program at Tacoma Community College. I worked with a graduate of that program in the past and am aware of other attorney colleagues also using that program as a source of office staff. I have no concerns about Mr. Hoyt's ability to complete the program and find work in the legal field upon graduation. Regards, slash S slash Christopher Taylor. Christopher Taylor, Attorney at Law. 36035280004, Voice, Taylor Law. Come 36057010006, Fax. 21st, 2022. To whom IT may concern. RE, reference for George Hoyta. Please accept this letter of reference and recommendation for Mr. Hoyta, whom I have known since he was my high school student during the early 1990s and throughout the time since then. I have no reservations whatsoever in my support for this young man whose brilliance and capabilities have, unfortunately, been obscured and untapped by the circumstances of his life for much of his young adulthood. Mr. Hoyta has a keen intellect, a love of knowledge and a strong work ethic, the likes of which I truly have not seen many times in my 35 plus years as an educator. Beyond that, he has a deep and abiding love of humanity and strives always, in his personal and professional life, to work for truth, equality and justice for all. As the only child of his invalid mother, Mr. Hoyta's launch into the fullness of his potential has been postponed for nearly 20 years because he cared for his mother, for the past seven years, full time. Since his mother's recent passing, he has been working, with support from Employment Security, Workforce Education Services Tacoma Community College and staff and faculty who know him, to complete a paralegal studies degree. Mr. Hoyta has aspired to be a lawyer for as long as I've known him, and he is finally in a place where he can begin to realize a career in the legal profession. Right now, he is facing yet another hurdle. 
After applying for unemployment and beginning studies under the Worker Retraining Grant Program, he was informed by Employment Security that he wouldn't qualify for training benefits because paralegal is not currently in demand. It happens that one of my professional roles for over five years was as worker retraining specialist and so I have been also assisting him with advice on appealing this decision. I have no doubt that Mr. Hoida, given the chance to complete his paralegal degree while continuing to collect his unemployment, will be very successful in his legal career. He is a fine young man with drive and determination and is exactly the kind of person we want in our legal profession. Thank you for your consideration. Sincerely. Lori Arnold, M. Ed. Independent Consultant. Claritine Pnu at Gmail. Com. Writ of Habeas Corpus Concerning George Randolph Hoy Jr. to the Court Concerning the Involuntary Emporizament of the Body and Person of Gorge R. Hoyta Jr., I am requesting the immediate release of Tay defendant and forced medical treatment from police and fire department and the unmust exploring an invasion of home and property. We direct to violations provided and protected by a Bill of Rights in America. Home Invasion Kidnapping, No Due Process Assault Destruction of Private Property Possible Arson Asset Removal This is the second time the police have attempted a home invasion of my apartment, and I want to be free from this harassment and be compensated for my pain and suffering. George R. Hoyta Last Will and Testimony By George Ramsage Hoy Jr., Gerard Randolph Hoy Jr., George Rampage Amur, Dominance Fortune The Infamous Game Untamed, Servi Notice, R.A. Destruction, Salim Osiris Shabazz, Dismas Emmanuel Amur. To whom it may concern. By no stretch of the imagination am I suical or particulti homicalid. However, in the event of my untimely death for any reason, I of sound mind and body do leave all my worldly possessions, donated to the Evergreen State College Tacoma Campus, Maxime Mim slash Carol Mitchell, IBJ. In the vent, there is to be no resuscitatin, not equals no organ donorship. Just burn the body. I love you all, Tacoma, WA. Yours truly, GRA, Black Sheep of Tacoma, Zmas EA Tel Victoria. Dear Vina, Spanish Hills Management. I have read and reviewed your noticeably signed eviction document, and agree that the perceived facts seem concerning. However, the lack of due process in this case and the fact that this is the second home invasion in six months leads me to believe that the true facts of the matter can be resolved strictly by reviewing the undeditined footage of the firefighters and police body cameras from forced entry to kidnapping without due process to involuntary imprisonment. Please consider these bodies of evidence before making any further reckless accusiones. George R. Hoya 2,533,015,421 room 1416. To well-bound doc unit. I understand that due to a lack of my medication, I was admitted into involuntary care at Wellboon Hospital. After weeks of treatment, I am feeling fine, and want to be discharged as soon as possible. Things I need, my food stamp card, my Apple insurance card, social security card, and a bus pass. Spanish Hills living conditions should know a plan where meds can be delivered to my door. These are my requests, and I'm asking to be relieved from custody immediately. Thank you, Gr. Hoida. To Tom Horton. I am hoping for a temporary discharge as soon as possible, as I need to pack up my belongings and put them in storage since I have now been evicted due to the lies and half-truths of the police and fire department. Judge and Mr. Josh Cook. I want out today to take of my business. My eviction is due on the 8th of July. I have a lot of packing to do. To Maxine Mims. In the event that I cannot hold on to my mother's works of art, I give them to Maxine Mims and Carol Mitchell, who have proven to me that they are most capable of using their mysterious powers responsibly. To my SW, I would like to set up my EBT card, and Medicaid card as soon as possible, thank you. To Mark Anthony Urban slash Chavez. I am writing to request a copy of the transcript and any video slash audio of my trial for my personal archive. I am also requesting an appeal on this decision, as it is my estimation that mens rea and foul play have been involved. 
I am also requesting the other two court appearances transcript slash audio slash veto done in November December 2022 at Multicare Hospital. To Dr. Hoa Dr. Emily Robinson of Alenmore. Dr. Hoa was the one who signed my beloved mother's death certificate. At the time, so much madness was going around me that I never got to say goodbye to my mother Anastasia Armorer. I would like all documents, video and audio, and what was done to save her life, and her final moments, immediately. To Dr. Emily Robinson. Whether strictly liable or negligent, your steroid injection was the catalyst that made my mom's inflammation spread so fast around her body she was unable to move. This matter is far from settled legally settled between us. To Angela Naylor, CEO, Chris Ray Kinas, CFO, Brian Neal MD, CMO, Ryamian Service, CCO, Crystal Edwards, Director of Utilation Management. We the inmonts both voluntary and involuntarily, by way of expectation under constitutional law, and just plain human ethics, have certain demands that we want to see happen here at EWB Hospital. We want access to internet and email facility for the patients. We want a room provided for exercise equipment. We find it ridiculous to be constantly fed and not be able to work off calories contributing to poor health. We want the right to refuse any medication that would destroy or change sexual energy or orientation to be charged with a crime before a crime is committed is illegal at worst, and unethical at best. We want complete oxay to the local and global news. The excuse of trigger to keep us isolated from the outside world is unacceptable. Those that don't want to see the news always have the power to leave the room. Only the universe or the most high gives or grants rights. Rights are a manner of ownership. We, as living entities, as the sole owners of our purpose and our jownery. Therefore, we humble challenge whether our righties can be diminished or taken away under any circumstance. Rights can only be imposed by a corrupt government that has tread over the Bill of Rights and now threaten the belief of rule of law here in America. Sincerely yours. Chattel named George or Hoy Jr., a Q-tall named Dismas Emanuel Amur. Dear Wellfound, I am making a few requests concerning my situation here at Wellfound, and would like to be pointed in the right directions to those who could help me. The true nature of my illness, I would like to speak to my provider and perhaps see their files concerning my treatment for said illness. I would like a copy of the fire department and police report, including unedited body camera footage of both for my personal discovery and defense testimony. I would like multicare involuntary administration, no due process, of my person in November of 2022. Paperwork files and all audio slash video conflict footage for my personal discovery for my archives. I also request all conflict footage audio slash video from Wellfound along with all court transcripts from my archives for discovery and defense testimony. I will be requesting from Multicare all files and footage of the death of my mother, Anastasia Amurer as her HCA and only son. In short, I will be seeking to counter sue for all rights diminished or...